to really understand how mutations and evolution can make all those different animals, we need to understand development. That is the process from a fertilized egg to an adult organism. Thus, if we, for instance, want to understand the, di the difference between this uh, shrimp-like thing and this fly, we need to study their development. Well, let's first have a look at their differences. I mean, what do we see? I see, well, uh, the one has wings and the other has not. And the legs, look at the legs. I mean, the shrimp has legs on every segment, whereas the fly only has legs on the thorax. Eh? There are no legs on its abdomen. Let's go into this. It is important to realize that the whole process from a fertilized egg to an adult organism is also regulated by proteins. And there is a group of proteins called transcription factors that play an important role. And these are a kind of director proteins. And an example is distillus. Distillus is a protein that determines where the legs will grow. And with a special technique we can visualize those proteins. And what do we see? In the shrimp there are red dots in every segment. In every segment there is distillus. In every segment a leg will grow. And in the fly, well, we see some pink dots in the head. That's not so, not so important now. But there are six clear dots in the thorax where the legs will grow. So only legs on the thorax of the fly and a leg on every segment in the shrimp. How does distillus do that? Well, I explained to you already that the DNA codes for proteins, but not all DNA. On the contrary, there actually is only so here and there a recipe with large pieces of DNA in between. Uh, most of the DNA does nothing. It's really junk. But some of the DNA is very important. They are so-called regulatory elements. They are important in determining when that recipe is read or not. When that protein the gene codes for is being made. And you can imagine those elements as a kind of switches. And what transcription factors can do is that they can bind to those switches and switch the genes on or off. So what distillus does is it binds to all the switches of the genes that you need to make legs and switches them on. So where distillus is, a leg will grow. And that is on every segment in the shrimp and only in the thorax for the fly. Now, Distillus itself is also a protein. Thus, it has a switch itself too. And only if distillus is switched on, it can bind to the switches of the leg genes and make legs. Now, let's have a look at the evolutionary history of these organisms. This is an evolutionary tree of the arthropods, the group to which the shrimps and the flies belong. And you see that the most basal organisms, like that centipede to the left, have legs on all segments. And only the Insects do not have legs on the abdomen. It looks like that what happened in the evolution toward the insects is that something evolved that switches off distillus in the abdomen. Now, the fruit fly is actually very well studied and we exactly know the two genes that do that. And one of them is abdominal A. And it is expressed exactly in the abdominal segments where, the, uh, where it switches off distillus. Thus what happens is Abdominal A binds to the switch of distillus and switches off distillus. No distillus protein is being made, thus distillus does not bind to the switches of the leg genes and does not switch the leg genes on, uh, they remain off, thus no legs in the abdomen of the fly. Now let's have a look at the shrimp. Do you think that that shrimp has abdominal A? Well, what actually surprised a lot of scientists in the 80s Yes, it has, and it is expressed exactly in the abdominal, seg abdominal segments. Why does abdominal A not switch off distillus in the shrimp? Well, to find an answer to that question, we must have a closer look here, to where abdominal A binds to the switch, the switch of distillus. Now, switches are also just DNA sequences, and the DNA has certain chemical properties, here visualized like shapes. And transcription factors can bind like a key and lock system to a certain sequence and switch the target gene on or off. Abdominal A is a real off switcher. It switches genes off. Now, if something else is written in the DNA, if those two A's there are, for example, G's, then you can have abdominal A as much as you like. It doesn't bind to the switch, goes away and leaves the gene on. And you understand already, if by mutations 
those G's change into A's, then abdominal A suddenly fits and can switch the gene off. And that's what happened in the insects. So all these organisms have distillus, and all the organisms have abdominal A. Right? There's no difference in that. The only differences are changes in the switches, in the regulatory elements of those genes. And that's actually an important discovery of EVO-DEVO, of evolutionary developmental biology. Not only proteins change by mutation, but changes in the regulatory elements of important developmental genes can make, can make completely new animal forms that are presented to natural selection. Now, how can we investigate this? In Leiden, uh, we are working a lot with this beetle, Tribolium castaneum. And using a technique called RNAi, RNA interference, we can knock down the function of a gene. So imagine we knock down the function of distillus, the gene that makes the legs. This is a wild type beetle, it has legs on all the thoracical segments. What would happen if we knock down distillus? Well, the second year biology students in Leiden tried to do this, and look what they saw. Of course, no legs. Now the most interesting, what would happen if we knock down abdominal A? What would happen if we knock down the genes that repress distillus? This is a wild type larva. What happens? Of course, legs on all these segments. We made a kind of centipede from an insect. These are some pictures the students made. Of course, the RNA eyes I showed are pretty catastrophic. I mean, no such animal will survive. But mutations can be more subtle. Uh, there are multiple binding sites for transcription factors in one regulatory element. Thus, gene expressions uh, can change gradually. Uh, in this real shrimp I bought on the market, that uh, orange cooked shrimp, the abdominal appendages are clearly different, much smaller than the thoracic legs. And this is how evolution makes new animals, by mutations. Not only in the proteins, but also in the regulatory elements of developmental genes. It is striking that all animals share a common set of developmental genes. Abdominal A, for instance, is a so-called Hox gene. We also have an abdominal A. And we also have a gene called distillus. It also determines where our arms and where our legs are made. All animals actually share a common toolkit of developmental genes, yet they look completely different. And the main differences are in where and when the genes are expressed and with, and with what other genes they interact. And this results in that great variety of possible animal forms presented to natural selection. In the next activity, you are going to play a bit with Hox genes and animal forms yourself.